Hi, Art Noble here. I'm the author of The Sacred Female and an expert in sexual biology. And perhaps you'd like to know why I consider myself an expert in sexual biology. I've been blessed by knowing some fantastic women in my life who gave me a wide variety of sexual experiences. And I'm also cursed with curiosity. I wanted to know what was happening in our bodies. So I started studying sexual science. And the first thing I learned was that my experience went far beyond what uh, sexual science, where sexual science was. And today, that's the reason for the casual attire, as we're going to go beyond sexual science. To, today, in this video, we're going to talk about vaginal emissions, orgasmic vaginal emissions. Now, why is this important to ladies particularly? Well, first of all, few women even have orgasms in this country, less than 50%. But secondly, uh, all of the uh, emissions that uh, a woman may have, prostatic or uh, urinary bladder, as we've discussed in the previous videos, and these also, uh, are far more pleasurable to the woman. I've been told uh, it's eight to ten times more pleasurable. And it's, from my standpoint, I look at this as a gift from the woman, and we'll get into that in a later video. But anyway, uh, we're going to talk about ducks. There, one scientist has proposed a series of ducks uh, running around the inside of the vagina about two inches in. Now, to my knowledge, there have been no autopsies on women to confirm this. Uh, it was a series of glands and uh, with ducks that empty into the vagina. But as I said, there's no science on this. Uh, there is another aspect too, but let's take a look and see what this looks like. Here we see the um, uh, entire female genitalia. And so let's just take a blow up of the section that we're interested in. Now this shows the vaginal walls with those red blotches would represent the glands and ducts that would be excited on orgasm and emit a fluid into the vagina which would come out through the vagina. Now my experience in this, I have no idea uh, what the comp as I said, there's no science on this, so there's no knowledge about what the composition of this is or the volumes that are uh, released here. It's just a proposed theory on what might cause it. Now let's go back and take another look at something else. Now this is a view of the female prostate. Actually, when Huffman did this, uh, this is a pencil sketch from a wax mold that he made uh, of the female prostate. Only in those days it was called periurethral glands. Now Zavayacek, uh, over a 10-year period from 89 to 99, autopsied over 200 women to uh, look at the female prostate. And he looked at the glands and the ducts and how they went back into the urethra, but he was not looking for a duct from uh, the uh, prostate gland into the vaginal wall. So we don't know if that could possibly be a source. Uh, or was it from a gland or was it actually from the urethra itself going into the vaginal wall? We don't know. There you have it the uh, two possible sources for one type of vaginal emission. Now, this is, uh, uh, I, I can't, you know, there's no science, so there's no data on the composition of the material, on the volume of the material, or anything like that. But as a guy, I can tell you what it feels like. I'm sure you've seen these circular uh, sprinklers, lawn sprinklers, that have little holes all throughout them, and they like that. Well, <laughs> imagine one of those with most of the holes blocked off, leaving 
one, three, five, I don't know how many. And it's like someone is taking the handle on the hose and going, chuk, 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 chuk. <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like. Well, one woman in Canada told me that uh, if she's a nurse, and she told me that it felt like she had a pinhole in her urethra that was discharging into the vagina, well, which makes sense from one of those things. And another woman told me, <laughs> I better read this to you. What she said was that this emission, <clears throat> quote, it was definitely vaginal. I can have a stab at a delicate description, but that won't help much. So here you have a more clinical version. The fit of the penis at the time of the gush was not sufficiently snug to prevent the fluids from gushing out. It was felt clearly by both parties as emanating from the vagina. The liquid had a lower viscosity than usually associated with the vaginal secretions and a higher temperature than previously experienced. It was also well before male orgasm and ejaculation had taken place, therefore ruling out the possibility of it being male ejaculate. It seemed to be sourced from the back wall, rectum side, rather than the urinary side of the vagina, but this could be due to with the angle at the time. Both parties commented on the sensation starting approximately two inches inside the vagina. Again, this might be because of the specific penile shape and therefore the vaginal fit. There was insufficient space for it to be felt with clarity further up. Well, there you have it. That's two descriptions of uh, what it, you know, uh, this is what they call anecdotal evidence. And there is one other source that we'll be getting into in the next video, and that is the mission that may have its source in the uterus. Wow. Well, thank you for listening, and I hope you may have learned something from this. Have a great day. Bye-bye.